The biggest issue is the economy uh, going into these elections. Everywhere we go, everywhere I travel across the country, people are very, very concerned about the state of the Belizean economy, uh, the uncertainty, there's great uncertainty, there's great anxiety about the future. Uh, um, and jobs, obviously, tied directly to the economy is the issue of jobs. People uh, are in need of jobs. Unemployment is sky high and growing. Uh, it's at over 24% now. So people are very, very concerned about their economic future. Uh, that is the number one issue. We believe that it has to start with a new government uh, that is committed to investment, uh, that is committed to an, a dialogue, a partnership with the private sector. Um, so I think that's the, the beginning, that's the first start. We need a new government that understands uh, the critical importance of investment in the Belizean economy, both foreign and local investment. Because the banks in Belize have, uh, they're liquid, there's a lot of cash in the banks. So the, 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 the cupboards are full, but the doors are locked. Uh, and we need to get those doors opened. Uh, we need to instill confidence in the business community that they can expand their businesses, they can invest in new projects. Uh, and people need, I think, that sense of confidence. And we're absolutely committed to doing that. Government won't be able to provide jobs for people. That's a reality. We've, we recognize that and we understand that. Uh, and certainly we're not in the business of firing people to create jobs uh, for PUP supporters. Uh, so we will rely on a meaningful partnership with the private sector. We believe that in a very short time, uh, with the projects that have been laying, languishing uh, on the sidelines because of a lack of confidence in this government, we believe that those projects uh, can be executed, implemented and executed very quickly. And that will immediately lead, I believe, to the creation of thousands of new jobs. I forgot to mention the whole area of the information, communications and technology sector, which I believe holds tremendous potential for Belize. Uh, we have to, once and for all, uh, open up uh, um, VoIP, uh, make it available and accessible to all Belizeans, to the private sector. Uh, we, have, uh, we own BTL. We have to make good use of that. Uh, product that we own. Um, in terms of the bandwidth, there's tremendous potential in terms of what we can do with the bandwidth. Uh, we can compete effectively with Latin America and Central America if we reduce our prices uh, and attract a lot of these uh, resource and data centers to Belize, which can attract, which can create uh, uh, thousands of jobs for people, not only at a clerical level, but also as we move on uh, at the software development level, network uh, level. Um, so I think there's tremendous potential in the communications and technology sector. The position of the government uh, today is a very responsible one, uh, where uh, the, the leader of the country, the Prime Minister, has been making statements about the possibility of Belize defaulting on the super bond and, um, you know, saying, um, you know, in effect, he doesn't care what the bondholders have to say, they will have to come to the government. I believe those statements, while they may win short-term political victories, uh, do not bode well for the future development of Belize's economy. Uh, so we have to be very responsible in, in our discussions on this matter. Um, the super bond, as I have consistently said, has become a burden on the backs of the government of Belize and the people of Belize in the context of an economy that is not growing. Every analysis that I have seen, Patrick, shows that if we have economic growth of around 4, 4.5 percent, we will easily be able to honor our obligations under the super bond and meet our payments. Uh, so it is in the context of an economy that is not growing, that is stagnant. Uh, it is in the context of a government that is devoid of ideas and solutions that this becomes a problem. We will be a government that has solutions, has plans to grow the economy, to create jobs. Uh, and in that context, I am absolutely confident uh, that we will be able to service the super bond without uh, providing any negative impact on our other commitments or other social sector commitments or other recurrent commitments. Um, and I have said very clearly, we have not taken off the table at all uh, the option of at some point having to restructure, renegotiate the super bond, but it has to be done in a responsible way, uh, in a respectful way. Uh, and I believe that if that need arises, 
uh, we will be able to do so uh, in a much better and effective way than the UDP government. It has to be done in a responsible way. It has to be a responsible partnership, uh, a win-win partnership. Uh, so I will go as far as, as is necessary uh, without obviously neg impacting negatively uh, the government's own agenda and our own responsibilities and obligations to the Belizean people. Uh, so as I have made very clear, we are prepared to sit down and discuss any project with any person in the private sector who is sincere, who is genuine, uh, who passes a net benefit test, as I said earlier. Um, that is going to be very critical. Crime is a very vexing issue. It's a, it's a complex issue. It's not a political issue. I accept that. Uh, no political party should be blamed for the crime situation. Uh, I think we would take the approach that, one, I think fixing the economy is, is job number one in terms of crime. I think in the context there, in the context of a growing economy where there are more economic opportunities, there are more jobs being created, you will see a reduction in crime. Um, secondly, we have to renew our commitment, I believe, to community policing. I think that has been absent uh, to some extent over the past four years. I think we need to reopen our police boots. Uh, we need to have more policemen on the ground, more boots on the ground. Um, and this whole uh, trust of community policing, neighborhood watch programs. Uh, I think those things are very important. I think uh, sometimes in the heat of the battle, we, we tend to underestimate the importance of those things. But they're very critical. I think we need to benefit from, from outside as well. We need to seek foreign uh, advice. I don't support the uh, having a foreign police commissioner, but I believe we can, have, we can benefit from advisors at a very high level who can uh, contribute to finding solutions to the problems based on their own experiences. Uh, so I, I will welcome that and we will work on that. We have to, of course, continue to work very closely with the police department and the BDF uh, and see how we can make those institutions more effective, um, boost the morale of our police officers, uh, work with our BDF again um, to give them more resources. We are united. The PUP took us a long time to get there. Um, uh, we had to cross many hurdles and uh, jump a lot of barriers, but um, we are united. The 31 candidates of the People's United Party are a united front. We're strong, we're ready, we're committed to serving the people of Belize. Uh, and I believe uh, on March 7th we will, um, we will be able to form the government of Belize. We believe first and foremost that the, the voice of the people should be heard uh, and that we should respect the decision of the Belizean people. As a government, we will not stand in the way of a referendum. In fact, we will seek to facilitate a referendum. We have said it very clearly uh, for many months now and we have put it in our manifesto. We will support a referendum on offshore drilling. We've already heard from the people in so, to some extent in the people's referendum. They spoke in overwhelming numbers. Uh, I myself voted no in that referendum. Uh, so that is my personal position. But we will hear from the people on the issue. Um, and uh, then, as we have said as well, we support a moratorium on offshore drilling uh, because the risks are just too great, Patrick. The risks are just, you know, it's an unknown uh, factor. Um, but one oil spill uh, could wipe out the tourism sector, could wipe out so much of our nat natural beauty or natural heritage. Uh, the risks are just too tremendous. And until uh, and unless we are completely satisfied as a people, not only as a government, but as a people, we are completely satisfied that those risks have been minimized or eliminated, uh, we should not support any offshore drilling. So we shouldn't look forward to you locking horns at Arjuna to our shepherd. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't look forward to locking horns with uh, Audrey. Uh, I hope. I hope we can continue to be uh, on the same on the same page uh, in respect of this and other critically important environmental issues. Uh, because I really believe. I really believe that um, Belize's future, uh, to a great deal extent, depends on the protection and integrity of our, our environment. And that's directly related to, to economic growth and development. Uh, they shouldn't be seen as separate issues. I think 
if we're going to grow and develop the economy, uh, we have to protect our environment. That is going to be a central component uh, for decades uh, to come, uh, a, a central component of, of our economic agenda. The environment, the natural beauty, the natural heritage that Belize has to offer the world. Um, and that would be my, my focus. That is our commitment, yes, that is our commitment. I know uh, the UDP and Mr. Barrow have taken the view that uh, that will lead to um, gridlock. I don't see it that way, I don't see it that way at all. I believe um, that we have, that. I think the, that position adopted by Mr. Barrow assumes that we have unreasonable people uh, in Belize and unreasonable people who will be appointed as senators. I think they will always seek to do what is in the best interests of Belize. Um, and I think they will f that 13th senator will work as an effective check uh, on the government of Belize. And it's clear to me that that, that that is what the overwhelming majority of Belizeans want to see. Uh, so yes, we are absolutely committed to appointing that 13th senator. Uh, we will do so within our first 100 days in office. Uh, and, you know, whatever consequences or implications flow from that, uh, I think it will be good for, for the democracy and, and governance of Belize. I am very grateful for the encouragement, the prayers that so many people have offered me on the campaign trail across the country, uh, the prayers and support they've offered to candidates of the People's United Party. Um, I want to urge people to go out and vote on March 7th. Obviously we would want them to vote for the People's United Party, but I want everyone to go out and vote, uh, regardless of who you're voting for. It's important that you have a stake in our democracy, uh, that you be an active participant in Belize's future. Uh, this is no time for anyone to be sitting on the sidelines with your hands folded. <clears throat> um, and certainly to, to our supporters, I want to make it very clear that we are going to be respectful on election day. Uh, we don't want absolutely any incidents of violence in Belize. Uh, we want to treat each other. Uh, yes, we're fighting a very uh, heated election campaign, but let's do so uh, with a sense of mutual respect. Uh, after the elections are over, we're going to be still be neighbors. We're going to still be brothers and sisters. We have to live together. And as I said earlier, the challenges that we're facing as a country will require all of us, PUP and UDP. They're not blue problems or red problems. They're problems that are facing Belize and they will require all of us coming together, working together, and understanding that the future of this country is at stake. Um, so I will appeal to my people to be respectful, uh, to be very tolerant, uh, to be patient, um, and let us not have any violence. We have a long history of peaceful uh, elections. Uh, let us try to uphold that tradition, and in fact build on that tradition. Um, and of course, you know, I urge people to vote for the People's United Party on March 7th. I believe we represent the best opportunity for Belize to move forward, uh, to create a better future for you, your families and your communities. We're going to focus on growing the economy, creating jobs and providing a better quality of life for the Belizean people.